Okay, guys, after the video, don't forget to click on my name in the video description below. Head on over to my site and click on the video tab and check out the other archived videos. I have over 100 plus videos on my site. So anyway, enjoy the video and thank you for, uh, thank you for your time. Okay guys, welcome back to Jack of All Trades. Today we're gonna take you through alternator testing and replacement video. What we're gonna do first is we're going to uh, test our battery, load test it. We're gonna wanna charge our battery and we're gonna wanna double check our voltage on our battery and make sure that it's fully charged. It's a cheap DVOM. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the test leads and we're going to set our DVOM to 20 on the DC scale on volts. I'll show you that in a second. Just like that. We're going to place our leads red positive, black negative ground. And we're looking for 12.7 volts. Oh, that's a good fully charged battery. Okay, I'm gonna connect my uh, load tester. Pick this up at Canadian Tire. And what this is going to do is, uh, after I have to remove the surface charge on the battery, we're going to load test. And you'll notice a little dot on the meter. Um, how I figured out where to look on the tester. On the actual battery, there's a cold cranking amps label. And you'll see it right there. That's where I got the number 600 from. It fluctuates based on temperature. Okay, so with it connected to the battery at rest, it uh, looks like it's pushing 13 plus, but it's not. I'm just going to click on the load tester real quick and then do it again. Hold it for 10 seconds and you'll see it's in the green zone. So the battery is uh, load tested good. I also took the battery over to a uh, Canadian Tire and had them hook it up to the $1,000 test tool and it passed. Okay, so the car's running. Actually, we got 14.1 volts, 14 volts. This isn't good. It should be higher than this. So, and you'll see what happens when I start to load the uh, alternator by turning the accessories on in the car. Right now, everything's off. So turn on the blower, fan on high, the headlights on, and the AC. I want the hornet in my car. Now looking at the meter, you see how it's in past the red? That's no good. It means that the battery is actually being drained with everything on it idle. Even if I bump it up to 2500, it's still well below spec. It's hardly, it's not even charging the battery. So I'm going to disconnect. The wires always disconnect the negative and the positive when it comes to a low tester. So what I'm doing here is a redneck method. I've disconnected the negative battery terminal and I just grabbed one of my emergency jumper cables, connected positive to B plus terminal on the alternator, which is the little nut. And I got the top, the uh, other connector on the top there of the engine cover. Now when I connect the negative back on the battery, that cable becomes live. So you want to be careful that that jumper cable doesn't touch the ground of any of the body because uh, it could spark. And what we're doing, we're bypassing the, 
positive car is wiring from the battery to the alternator and we're bypassing the inline fuse. So I just want to see if my meter is going to read the same to eliminate the positive wire in the car because uh, we're going to be doing voltage drop tests on the wires themselves, the grounds and the positive wire, but this is just a redneck method test to uh, check your results. And we're going to connect the jumper cable to battery positive. And then we're going to load up the uh, car with the accessories again. The blower motor on high, heat uh, IEC on, and the headlight. And you're going to rev it to 2500 RPM, but you see how it's at 12.6. That means that the uh, battery is not being charged with the accessories on. So that's not good. The alternator is putting out nothing. So what we got is a cheap Walmart clamp, battery negative disconnected, car's cool, and I connected this to the B positive of the alternator. And as you hear the fan come on, uh, you don't want to be sticking your fingers in there because you can get caught in the fan and burn get burnt by the exhaust manifold. We're going to connect the DVOM and it's set to 2 on the volt scale. And we're going to set, we're going to take the positive lead and touch that clamp connected to the alternator. You want to be careful not to get your fingers caught. That's why I'm using these long pliers to reach down to touch. Because you got to do this while the car is running and there's a load on the alternator. To do the voltage drop. And as you see, you want any, no more than 0.5 volts. Hyundai says 0.2. I'm getting point 0.3, that's good enough for me. We're going to do a voltage drop test on the ground. The negative side of the battery, we're going to connect one lead. Then we're going to touch the other lead to the alternator outside case of the alternator. Now if you hook your DVOM backwards, you're going to get a negative reading. It's still the same reading. And we're looking for no more than 0.2 volts with a load and the car at 2500 RPM. So I got less than 2 volts. So I know that my grounds are good. What you're going to do is set your uh, amp clamp to 400 amp DC and wrap it around the two wires that are positive connecting to the terminal like so and zero at the meter.
Okay, what we're going to do now is uh, disconnect the negative and the positive terminal on the battery. We're going to want to clean all the connections to the battery, positive and negative terminals, as well as the connections themselves. And we're going to be also checking the uh, battery to body ground and engine block to, to body to make sure that all these connections are secure because you could have high voltage drop tests because of high resistance and corrosion a break in the wire so we're just going to clean the terminals I picked this little cleaner tool up at Walmart it's got like little wires in it and once both terminals are clean we're going to use the other side of the tool to clean the inside of the connectors or the terminals make sure that it's all nice and clean And then we're going to remove that bolt there that holds the battery in place. You're going to notice there's no battery sleeve on the battery. I uh, took it off because I've been removing this battery for all these videos that I've been making. We're going to take the battery out. Make sure you don't tip it so none of the acid comes out. We've got four bolts the same size and a little bolt. And we've got our ground wire that runs below the battery tray and connects to body ground. We'll remove all the bolts. And we're going to check this, make sure that bolt's tight, that connects to the body ground, and that there's no corrosion in that area. If you have a bad ground cable to your battery, it could cause a no start, some weird electrical issues. So make sure you voltage drop test that wire. And this is the body engine block to body, this is the ground wire. So it's important you check those two spots and voltage drop test on each side of those wires. And before I put the battery back in, I suggest tipping these bolts with some anti-seize. And this will help remove them later. Because you got a lot of corrosion and a lot of weather. Especially if you're further north. And these bolts rust out. So I just cleaned the top of the battery surface as well. And I'm just going to install it. And when you put it in, make sure that the terminals, when you put the terminals back on, Put the uh, battery sleeve back in first, protect it from the weather. Connect your positive first and then your ground, your negative. And when you connect the negative, you want to make aware that it doesn't make contact with the fuse box, the plastic, and the terminal. And the positive wire doesn't make contact with the radiator hose to cause it to heat up. Once you got the battery centered, you're going to put in the uh, clamp that holds the battery to the tray. Hand tight all these bolts, quarter turn, that's good enough. Okay, the following are the wire diagrams. If you turn that vehicle on, you're going to want to check the 10 amp fuse if you don't have the bulb turned on on the battery light. It's located inside the car, underneath the steering wheel on the dash there, and the 10 amp. You're going to take it out and uh, look at it, make sure it's not blown. Then you're going to check voltage at that fuse. And I got all the connectors covered right now. You're going to turn key on, volts are going to run through the connector, which is this connector here at that pin. And then uh, it's going to run through the fuse. But before it gets to the fuse, it's going to run into IPG and over to the fuse. If this is going too fast for you, you can always pause the video and check the wire diagrams out. So from there to there, we're going to check over from the fuse box to the dash where the light is. And we're going to check the connectors for voltage, key on at these pins to make sure that the bulb is getting voltage from the ignition switch and going through the fuse. And these are the locations of the connectors. This is the back of the fuse box in the car inside the cab.
So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own ground on the bulb light. And we're going to do it at M09-2 connector. And you'll see it right there. We're going to ground that pin, turn the key on. The bulb should light. If it doesn't light, the bulb's burned out. And then we're going to check the wire after the bulb. It goes from the dash back to the fuse box. Again, it's like a loop back to the fuse box again. In the rear, it's going to be this connector here. And it's a close up so you can read the pin numbers. Right there. That's the pin. You're going to be testing for continuity. Now with the excite resistor, you're going to have to ask Condi about that one because I, I don't know how to test that one. That's built into the fuse box. Now we're going to test from the excite wire from the alternator over the fuse box. This could uh, be most likely your issue because this wire runs along the frame of the car through the firewall into the car and it could get damaged, which could cause your alternator not to turn on the voltage regulator because it needs that wire to excite the alternator. So we're just going to check that wire for continuity between the alternator and the fuse box. So these are the pins. So that's the connector that plugs in, and the other one is the actual bolt that connects to the positive wire. So I'm sure this information will be valuable if you've got issues with your bulb in your dash. So let's, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm replacing the three belts, but I'm not going to cover this. I have a three belt uh, replacement video series with connectors, torque specs, belt tension. Please check that out with this video because if I miss some things in this video like torque settings or whatever you're gonna want to know it and see all the close-ups I went to Canadian Tire and I bought a rebuilt alternator from Remy and it's a OE spec it's got the same amperage rating as the OEM and uh, it's got the same adapters, the same connector, the same size pulley which is important you're going to make sure the pulley is the same on both alternators. And then you're going to check it for any noise. I had this alternator bench tested before I brought it back, brought it home. Because you don't want to put an alternator here and find out it's not working and have to redo this job. That's uh, B plus with the nut. And the other one is the sight wire the connector. And this is the lower alternator bracket. You're going to press that little adapter in. If it's sticking out, it won't install in the car correctly. <clears throat> and the alternator had did have noise in the pulley. This is the product number, the 0196772-4. There's different companies that make different alternators. I just chose the Remy. It's got a three-year warranty. So, have any issues with the 60,000 kilometers exchange warranty? And it's quite expensive for this thing. And it cost me $249. And the $10 is it's called the core charge. So once you install it, you get it back. So right now I'm going to show you how to install the alternator. Uh, best way to install it, uh, to access under the car. So we're going to show you everything right now. Okay, before you start working on the alternator, you can take the negative battery uh, terminal off the cable before we touch anything. Because uh, if it sparks, it could damage other components in the car, including the computer. Now, I'm reaching down, I'm disconnecting the fan connector, the power steer and pump connector. Uh, so I can get access to the alternator. So if you have if you can't see what I'm doing, you can check out the belt three-part belt series. 
and uh, you'll see exactly the close-ups because I got a camera on that video showing you uh, in detail this area so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just disconnecting everything I just uh, broke the fans bolts loose and I'm just gonna remove them uh, there's three bolts to hold on both fans two outer bolts on each side and then one middle bolt that shares that holds the two fans together with one bolt and I'm just going to be doing this so I can move the fan out of the way and uh, get to that alternator tension bolt because there's not a lot of room down here and I'm going to want to remove the uh, power steering pump I'm going to there's two bolts to hold it on uh, one down here and there's one inside the pulley so you're just going to move the pulley until you can access the bolt we're completely going to remove the pump and move it away so we can have more room to get down to the alternator and if you're not too sure about tension like I said check out the belt videos three part series the bolt here this is your upper alternator bolt that holds to the bracket which connects to the engine block or the side of the engine a couple of bolts we're going to remove the lower dust shield and eventually we're going to have to get under the car and uh, work from there to get the alternator up so I'm just uh, moving the fan out of the way underneath take a wrench undo the plus B nut on the alternator and then just uh, we're going to unthread it with the hand and uh, we're going to wiggle off the wire that connects to the battery this wire is, takes a little bit of wiggling to get it out because these things haven't been in here seven years so just cut to cut out all the, uh, the last five minutes there you go <laughs> wire is out and we're just going to screw the alternator bolt back on so we return the alternator we're going to give them the bolt with it too Get her 10 bucks back. You'll notice that area unplug the top wire to the alternator. It's pushing connector, pull, and they come out. So you can't see what I'm doing. I try to get the camera angle, so I just showed you a little diagram here. I'm removing those two bolts at the top of the alternator completely. So that the only thing that's left to remove is the pivot bolt at the bottom of the alternator before we take it out. And like I said, we're just going to remove the water pump. Don't be yanking on it. We're just going to have it sitting there. You need to remove the oil filter. You need a catch pan. You can reuse the oil filter, but just make sure you test it with the car on. Uh, that for leaks before you put the dust shield back on. You need to remove this tire. 80 foot pounds for the bolts for the tire. And the two bolts for the dust shield to get access inside the side of the car while we're underneath to hold the alternator and you can see I already moved the bolt out a little I'm just going to attach a pair of pliers so we can remove the bolt the rest of the way and so I don't damage the oil filter threads I'm under the car holding the way of the alternator with my hand while I remove the bolt and then we're going to slowly work the alternator up this took about 20 minutes by the way and wiggle it up and it should just come off up and out and release so we can lower the alternator down past the oil filter to the bottom of the car and remove it just like this now there was another video that showed it removing it through the radiator that's just stupid it doesn't work so don't even try it you want to remove the alternator this way this is the only way to remove this alternator Okay, so there's the old one, there's the new one. There's an amp, there's an amp sticker stamped on it. Uh, if you're not too sure when you're doing the test of the capacity of the alternator, I covered that in the uh, testing part. And we're just going to carefully uh, put the alternator up and then put our bolt back in and then the nut to hold the bolt. And we're going to leave it loose, but it's going to be hand tight just like that and now we're going up to the top and see the two circles at the top the alternator bracket we're connecting the two bolts back right now 
up at the top. So it's hard to film these areas because they're really tight to get my camera in there, the tripod, it's just... I show this better in the other videos, in the three uh, belt replacement videos. So this is a snapshot. There's the tension bolt and the alternator bracket bolt, which I just put back in. And that's holding the alternator in place now. It's not tensioned yet, and none of the bolts are tight. There's a little square on the bottom of the alternator where the cable wiring connects. You want to push it in to hold the cable. And you got to pull out of the connector as well when you remove the old alternator. So I'm going to put the two bolts back in the fan. It fits down in the slots. And then torque it to 8.0 foot pounds. That's not a lot of that's not a lot of torque. That's basically hand tight a little bit and you're done. Connect the alternator plus wire, which is the excite wire, and tighten the uh, B plus bolt at the bottom of the alternator. Actually, no, not the B plus. Yeah, the B plus the where the cable connects to the battery. 26 foot pounds, that nut, and then do all the torque settings. So now we have the car running. Nothing's on. We got. See how the needle's higher now? We got almost 14.5 volts. And with the load, we're down to 14, 13, 9. Depends on the temperature when you do this task. That's a good alternate. Thank you for watching, guys.